What's going on guys, it's Caleb, and today we have a Plum Crazy Purple Shaker Edition Dodge Challenger rolling its way through the shop. Now the paint on this vehicle is quite amazing. At first when you look at it, you're like, eh, it's just a purple Challenger. Some people get their cars wrapped purple, it's not really that big of a deal. But take my word for it, stick around. It is literally a mind-boggling color. Once we finished up correcting it and coating it, it's just been an astounding car to work with. This vehicle does have a name, by the way. I guess I should go over that right here at the beginning. The vehicle's name is Violet. The owner made sure to tell me that that and I have to say Violet was a wonderful wonderful client to work with so anyways sit back relax guys I hope you enjoyed the video we're gonna start by getting these wheels nice and cleaned up using some PNS brake buster I got some Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner and some detail brushes this is gonna be a good one Usually I do a couple minutes in the video right at the beginning to get the wheels nice and clean, but with this car we're going to go ahead and move right into the engine bay. Now normally I don't really do engine bays all that often, but with this car I kind of got the all clear do whatever I wanted to it and I wanted to make sure the engine bay was clean. Plus I've done quite a few challengers in the past and I wanted to see what was different with the shaker edition versus the other challengers. Looks like this one has been set up to be a reliable fun daily driver, has a 5.7 Hemi in it with an open intake as you guys can see. We're going to go ahead and cover that with a microfiber. I still like to go through and put a microfiber over the alternator just to play it safe. Otherwise I just foam the engine bay down with my pre-treatment foam and then go through with some brushes and make sure everything gets nice and cleaned up. Now we're going to go through and foam down the paint with my pre-treatment foam. This is going to be Stoner Car Cares Moab mixed with some D101 all-purpose cleaner from Meguiar's. And while the car is nice and foamed down, I'm going to go through with my detail brushes and make sure all the crevices are nice and clean.
after a very thorough pre-treatment phase, we can go ahead and get this thing hand washed up so that way we can move it on in. further into getting this car prepared for a paint correction we're going to be doing a decontamination stage with a clay bar now it's very popular to see detailers on youtube or wherever using a bunch of quick detailer as their clay lubricant you don't really have to do that as a lot of money going down the drain i personally have just water in my spray bottle with like one or two squirts of quick detailer speaking of quick detailers go down to the description you will see what kind i use from stoner car care awesome sponsor of the channel link below check it out Speaking of stoners, we're going to use some Terminator here because I don't know how I missed this, but there's tar right here on the bottom of the driver's side quarter panel. Can't believe I missed this during the detail phase, but as you can see, wiped it right away, not a big deal. Going through the paint inspection, it is clear that this car is going to be a totally different vehicle when we are done with it. There's a lot of damage here to clean up and to make really freaking nice and I'm really excited for it. But the one thing I guess I should note just starting out the correction phase is that my auto white balance in the camera is going to be throwing a little bit of a fit. I'll explain more about that later because the reason for it is pretty cool, but what you guys are going to be seeing is a blue car and then a purple car and then heck a red car. starting off the next day with the plum crazy challenger i'm turning on all my lights here
Bug guts on the front of your car is definitely not something uncommon. I mean, you probably right now have some on the front of your car. But a lot of times, especially with high mile cars, you'll see them on the front bumper and they've sat there for a long time and the guts have baked from the sun and etched its way through the clear. And just like hard water stains, it can get to a point where it's etched so deep you can't really get it out. So as you can see, we are correcting the paint and the swirls are coming out. It's looking beautiful, but those etchings are still there. It sucks, but when it comes to stuff like this, my whole saying is to try to make it so glossy that it overlooks those blemishes. scratches in there that are way too deep. It's expected, it's the trunk area with over 100,000 plus miles on it. But that's a massive improvement. That looks like a totally different color paint. As you guys have probably noticed, I'm using McGuire's microfiber cutting pads for the cutting process. And after I get done with an area, I go over here to this bucket, take some compressed air, and I like to blow out the pads really well. This is probably going to be the best way to keep these kinds of pads really clean as you're going panel to panel.
although on the softer side of medium, because like most domestics, that's how it is, it's sticky. Now I know to many of you that might not mean anything or make any sense, but the compound gets really sticky and stuck and nasty and sucks. So the way you get around that is to add water to your pad or physically on the surface as you're polishing. Yes, it can become quite messy if you use too much, but once you find that perfect mix, it comes off easily just like this. Now with 99% of cars out there nowadays, you're really not gonna run into this sort of thing. With this car, I only had issues with the front bumper and rear bumper, and I think that has to do with the paint being a different formula compared to the rest of the vehicle. Especially with body panels being more and more popular to use a fiberglass or plastic related material, it wouldn't be surprising to see the priming or paint process being a little bit different than, let's say, on a metal alloy door or something. I've ran into sticky paint with single stage paint cars, like Porsches for example. Single stage Porsches are notorious for having sticky paint, but it's not really too much of a concern today. As it stands, we're done with the cutting process and we're going to move on to refining all of that cutting with a yellow Rupes foam pad and some Menzerna's super intensive polish. This is where it gets really good because once you refine all of that micro marring from cutting really deep, you're going to get a revived, glossy, vibrant looking car. It's very nice.
It took a lot of time to get this paint refined, just because as I was going through, I noticed a couple of spots where I could definitely chase a few scratches, and then I would have to go back and refine that. I just wanted the paint to look really good. We weren't chasing perfection here, but it was very hard for me not to chase perfection, especially with a color like this. But now that we're done polishing, I'm going to go ahead and try to blow off all the excess dust from the product we used, wipe everything down with IPA, and do some toothpickery work in all the crevices just to get rid of that excess residue. For coating the car, we're going to be using my favorite coating system, which is G-Technic's Crystal Serum Light matched with XOV4. It's very easy to apply, just put some in an applicator pad and then apply it to the paint nice and evenly. And then I have two different microfiber towels that I wipe away the product with, just to make sure there's nothing left over because you definitely don't want any high spots. things to kind of button up with this before the owner comes here in like two hours or so but I want to talk about the interior real quick so originally I was gonna try to film the interior but because this thing is a freaking boat sitting in my bay there is no way I'm gonna be able to finagle lighting camera tripods and all of that I do have to get that done real quick so otherwise if I have any clips of the interior being done in any way shape or form that's what will come up after my big fat face is done talking Otherwise, we're going to be putting on the tire dressing after treating them with Stoner Car Care's Terminate. Link in the description below. Awesome people.
You sound like some dude who knows what he's doing with ads. All right, I have an idea. I'm gonna try to just set up my camera on each side, just like I did the BRZ. The interior really wasn't all that bad, so I used PNS Express Interior Cleaner, which is a very good and safe lighter cleaner for interiors. Of course, we blowed everything out and used a vacuum too. Really, the only thing I saw that needed some attention was the leather. For the leather, I went ahead and used PNS just because they really weren't all that dirty, so I didn't want to go too crazy with it. And with this being a light cleaner, it would do its job pretty well. Really, what I focused on cleaning the leather was my steamer. I went through and steamed everything after I got it nice and scrubbed up, and then wiped all of that up and let them dry. After they dried this when I came through with a new microfiber tile that's nice and clean and it was dampened with just water. I went through every single piece of leather and wiped it down so that way just regular old water can sit on there and the leather has time to absorb all that. That's what's really going to give it that nice soft plush feel after it's been cleaned. protect the leather we're going to use G10X Leather Guard. This is going to be a leather nano coating that's going to protect it from dye transfer or UV or fading. It's going to last about a year or two give or take. Very very good and easy product to apply as well. You just put some on an applicator, wipe down whatever you're trying to wipe down, then come back a little bit later and wipe away any excess you see left over. Give it a little bit of time, come back to it and go ahead and wipe it down again with another layer and then you're going to be good and protected.
protect all of the plastic interior as well as things like the dash and trim, we're going to be using Sonar Car Care Ceramic Trim Shine. Think of it as paint. If you have like a ceramic spray or something, you wipe it down, it's going to bring back that gloss, it's going to make it nice and slick, UV protected. Essentially the same thing for the interior plastics. It's going to bring back the look and the life of it while keeping it UV protected. And then to wrap everything up, we're going to go ahead and wipe down the tires with some Tarminator from Stoner Car Care to prep them for dressing. Then use some Meguiar's Hyper Dressing with a brush to apply it. Come back about 10 minutes or so after it's sat in on the tires and wipe them down with an applicator. But with us putting on tire dressing, that means we've pretty much reached the end of the video. So if you guys enjoyed it, please show me by leaving a like. I will tell you right now, I enjoyed it. I know I say that with majority of cars that come to the shop just because I genuinely love what I do. But when I'm throwing a wild card, like a plum crazy purple car like this, <laughs> A lot of times when you get weird paint codes like this that come through the shop, they're not in a very swirled up state. So whenever I can get something like this to come through, show how damaged it is, show the process of reviving it, and then showing the after shots, it just makes the job that much better. So if you like car detailing content or car content in general, go ahead and press subscribe as well. Other than that, guys, I will see you all next time in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.